I'm Luke Story. For the past 22 years, I've been relentlessly committed to my deepest passion, designing the ultimate lifestyle based on the most powerful principles of spirituality, health, psychology, and personal development. The Lifestylist Podcast is a show dedicated to sharing my discoveries and the experts behind them with you. All right, Philip, welcome back to the show, man. Thanks for having me. I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, me too, man. I'm always excited to talk to you because every time we speak, you have some new development with your technology and uh, in the world of all things quantum devices and tech, I'm just a huge fan and totally obsessed with it. Hence, for those watching on the video, I have my Leela Quantum Tech t-shirt on today. Uh, which I wear only on special occasions because I don't want to have to wash it too many times. Um, so I wore it today because there's a bunch of Wi-Fi in here and I wanted to be super energized. And I charged it in the in the infinity block too. So I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, so tell us, I guess let's start with, you know, what is Leela Quantum Tech as a company? What, what are you guys doing uh, with your technology? And then how did you find yourself in this field? Yeah. So what we do is basically two things. Um, on one end, we have developed the technology that can imprint pure quantum energy into any object. And it can transmit pure quantum energy. So that's just that. And, and with that comes the ability to actually also leverage certain frequencies so we work with a network of really absolutely top-notch healers together to create certain frequencies that help people, animals, and plants with various use cases. And so we can combine basically the technology and the different frequencies to create products that help people in their daily lives, help animals, help plants. And in a way, you know, our mission is to help you know, do, do our part to help heal humanity. Sounds pretty big, but again, it's our part. There's tons of other people and great companies that do their part. But that's really our mission uh, in our world. That's what we try to do. And how did you uh, get involved in this? And I used to work in telecommunications for the the baddies making cell towers. <laughs> and now you're on, now you're redeeming yourself, making uh, energy technology that actually supports people. But how did you, you know, get involved in this? And what was the beginning of, like, what was your first device and the first time you realized, okay, we're really on to something cool here? Yeah. So, I mean, decades ago, I realized that there's way more to life than just the the material world and the, you know, you have your job and you go to bed and next day you go to your job again and then you do that to pay your bills. That's really not what we're here for. And I started to really develop that out. And then I met my wife, you know, in 2005, who was actually born with the ability to see aura and she never lost this conscious divine connection, which means, you know, the access to, you know, all the databases, you can call databases or Akashic records, however you want to call it. Um, to pull information out and basically to see and know things that most of the people have no access to anymore, which is not rightly phrased because we all have access to it. We just don't know how to access it anymore. And yeah, so I worked in telecom. Indeed, I was actually even a vice president uh, at T-Mobile International and, and, and T-Mobile US. And at some point, I just couldn't do that anymore. It was, you know, I had to live from just within, from my heart. And I couldn't really do it there, right? Because it was just such a stretch. You, you had to be in this world. And then when I came home, I'm, I was the real me. So, but at the same time, for a few years, I realized, okay, I, I still need to be there because of whatever reasons. I don't know. Maybe it was just to also shine some light in, in organizations like that. But maybe it was also to gain knowledge about you know, certain technologies out there. And now I can see it from the other side, really, you know, about EMF, what we can do. And I think this whole healing journey of myself, you know, remembering who I am, which I had totally forgotten myself, um, with knowing what people struggle with, really, because I've went through it myself, that led to the fact that we developed these products. And one nice side effect was, or, or side influence, I must say, was my wife who had the chronic Lyme disease 
which was diagnosed five years after she actually had it. And, you know, people say you can't heal it, but hey, you know, uh, she doesn't have it anymore. None of it, not no symptoms, nothing, no side effects. And yeah, it actually sent me on a journey to find the best possible stuff to help her. You know, she had her own capabilities, but that was kind of my mission in a way. So it became really my passion, my hobby. And out of all that, I think Leela Quantum Tech emerged ultimately. What were some of the things that she did to overcome Lyme? Just as a side note, I know I've done a lot of shows on it and will continue to do so, but uh, each person I meet that's overcome Lyme seems to have had somewhat of a unique strategy. There's not like a one silver bullet for it that always works for all people. Yeah. So it's a great question. And I, I think the best approach is to look at it holistically and really figure out, okay, what are the root causes behind it? And, and those are different from person to person. But I think you need to go into this open-minded and figure out, okay, so what of all the options out there is something that resonates with me and helps? And then you'll find different things, right? So I guess on her way, in between, the Rife machine was something that had helped her for a while. She actually turned vegan, which I don't think like being vegan is something that everybody needs to be. It was just for her specific situation, the right thing to do. It helped her quite a lot. Climate change helped quite a bit. And then certainly energy work um, was another ingredient. And, you know, at the time she was even in Seattle speaking with Dr. Klinghart in, in, in his office. Oh, wow. It was like, the guru, the Lyme disease yeah. guru, right? And um, they would even in her office to regular people recommend shamanic work and stuff like that. Now, that was nothing new for my wife, obviously, but I found it very interesting that they would recommend that. And I, I think that's something I can pass on. You know, you want to look at it holistically. So she looked into, okay, so what are the root causes, causes within me? Why is this happening? Because we're all creators we create our lives. It's not that it just happens to us. So if you have that mindset and then you, you you dig, you'll get there and then you'll be able to solve it. And yeah, of course, you know, these this technology helps quite a bit with things like that. We won't say here it heals anything, but you know, because the body can heal itself, but this helps your body to be in a state that it can actually perform that very task. Yeah, it's interesting that um, she went to see Klinghart. I mean, he's a very sought after guy for those that don't know him. He's just one of the leading natural healing doctors in the world. And um, a friend of mine, Brian Hoyer, who's been on the show, uh, I think has done some work with him or knows him. But what Brian told me was that Dr. Klinghart won't even work with someone unless they deal with the EMF in their house. Because he found over the years that, you know, his as many of the tools as he has that are useful and effective would be rendered less effective or sometimes ineffective if people were in a really high EMF environment, people living in cities where there's cell towers all over and stuff. So that's kind of wild that you ended up, you know, inadvertently <laughs> getting involved with the technology that's really helpful, you know, in harmonizing the field of EMF, Yes, which of course is its own thing because one school of thought is that to get rid of EMF, the only option is to block it completely which is something I just did in our house here in some of the rooms. And then the other school of thought is it's just energy. It's just energetics, right? You're just filling your ambient environment with energy that's um, not harmonious with your biology, but there are things like this and other things out there um, that can actually harmonize the field. And then you get into kind of the spooky woo-woo land. But yet in that woo-woo land, some of the stuff works. And that's, I think, the interesting thing about it and why I like interviewing people like you that are not afraid to go into the realms of energetics because I'm sure having a company in that space is more difficult than having a supplement, right? You're like, Hey, this, here's a great B vitamin. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's quantifiable. You could measure your blood plasma and know that you have more B vitamins in you. Cause you just took some, whereas in the energetic space, you know, I know you're doing some testing and we're going to talk about that, but it's, um, it's a little more ambiguous. But congratulations on her overcoming that. It's really a brutal one for so many people. Thanks. Yeah, it is. So we, uh, we, we know it can be very, very brutal. And especially because you don't, 
often realize that someone has something, but they feel just so bad, have this constant fatigue and, and they just feel miserable. So yeah, so we, and we've actually gotten a lot of great feedback and testimonials from our customers in regards to Lyme disease. We, we never asked for that. It's, it just came that way. And after we've gotten a whole bunch, we said, okay, now we're actually going to run a whole study on it. So we're about to start a really big study um, in regards to chronic Lyme disease patients here in the U.S. Oh, Just nice. because the, the feedback was so overwhelmingly positive, like that fatigue went away and, you know, someone called me and said, you know, his wife has a chronic Lyme disease or his partner and said, oh my God, all this fatigue is gone and she's so energetic and now she has, you know, she wants to do stuff again. And it's like this changed all our lives, like literally. And it's just heartwarming to hear something like that. And, you know, that that's also actually something that Klinghardt's philosophy is, right? You know, I mean, he says you can't really get rid of the Lyme okay, you know, I, I don't want to go there, but his message is you just need to become so strong that whatever you have there doesn't bother you. And that's kind of the same thing. Like we know from Roman, who is like the healer wonder, wonderkind in, in Europe, uh, Roman Hafner, we, we work with him a lot. And he says, you know, this energetic environment, this limes just can't stay there. It's just, such a high vibration they just don't they they just can't exist there anymore um so it, that's something okay that's his view um from someone that can see energy fields and, and frequencies to a very granular level from birth so now we're going to actually see what the study shows that's so uh, cool <laughs> i i love when people like you conduct studies you know because then you you have something that's quantifiable and concrete right I mean, I just believe in energetics. I'm a longtime meditator, and I know there's much more than this physical world here because I have experienced it um, in so many different ways. But then again, it becomes anecdotal in many cases, right? Like, I don't know, I think I feel better. And then there's so much potential for placebo too. But when you actually see quantifiable evidence of something, I think even if there is a, a placebo component to something, I don't mind a placebo. <laughs> like, give me a pill and tell me it's going to work. And if I believe strongly enough it's going to work, that it helps me, great. But I think that when someone who's using a technology like this, uh, that if you see some quantifiable evidence that's tangible, then it helps instill a belief, right? And so your biology is going to respond to your belief, obviously, like the work of Bruce Lipton, the epigenetic factor of like how your thoughts really um control your biology yep. and so if you're thinking to yourself wow i'm going to introduce this into my lifestyle in the hopes that it supports my health and you really believe that it will because you've seen some proof i would think it's going to potentiate the effect of it even more because you're believing in something that you've seen to be true exactly and actually even more so in a field like that um because it it actually potentiates that so which is quite interesting and and we've we've also done we've done actually several studies i don't think there's any company out there in the energetic space that has put so much focus on studies and whether it's dark field microscopy pictures whether it's uh, a deca vol study actually multiple of those and then you know the emf uh, heart rate variability and all that kind of stuff but it's it's a lot of that we wanted to do because we know it works right and it's very scientific, frankly, you know, those studies, what sometimes, what cannot be explained really in a scientific way today, really, because how exactly does this work? So everybody's still having a little bit of a hard time. It's like Ian Mitchell said the other day, you know, it's like going back to the 1600s and you give someone a smartphone and then, <laughs> you know, have them tell you what it does and how it works. He's not going to be able to do that really, but it still works. So what we can do is we can scientifically measure the output, what it does, what are the results. And we know, I mean, there's a lot of people that want satisfaction for their brains. They need to see it and, and not everybody can see and feel energy. So that's a focus of ours. So, you know, we're not a big company, so we can't do these huge studies, but we do what we can. So everything actually that we you know, that we that we make that we can do and make work, we'll put it into studies, 
just because also for our own interest, right? We want to know now with this Lyme, okay, so is this something, how does it work with everybody? What are the, even though everybody is different, what is, what are the common factors there? Got it. It's interesting too, uh, that your wife is tuned into the energetics and shamanism and things like that. As you know, my fiance, Allison is, um, because those people are good test subjects. Those people that, I mean, like you said, we all have the capacity, but some people are more tuned into it, right? Seeing auras, feeling energy, having visions, communicating with guides, all this kind of stuff, which some of us only experience if we're doing plant medicines or we have some huge push that allows us to get past the veil of, uh, you know, what we commonly see. But I was telling you before I recorded, the minute I brought this, um, for those watching the video, this is the infinity block. And before we had the other one, the uh, this one's the quantum block. Quantum block. Yeah, yeah, this one's just stronger. You can see it has more levels. But when I first got this one and brought it into the house, I put it on the coffee table, and I, you know, told Allison this imbues anything you put in it with with energy, with positive healing energy. And so I was putting my supplements in there and stuff like that, which I still do. I we keep this on the coffee table, and anything new we introduce into the house that we're going to put in our body, and even I'll put in like a hamburger. You know what I mean? <laughs> Like anything, my water in the morning, I make my special little elixir, I put that in there. So she sees me doing that and she doesn't, she's not really into the biohacking stuff much. I mean, here and there, you know, she might be interested in something, but I think because she is tapped in in that way, when I brought this into the house, I noticed she started putting all her flower essences and stuff from her altar. Yeah. And I'd see her over there charging her stuff. And I never told her, you know, hey, you should do this. It's good for your health. She just took it upon herself. And I always see her putting stuff in there. And that was some more validation for me because she didn't have to read about it. She didn't have to look at a study. She didn't have to listen to our interview or talk to you or really know much about it. She was just like, yeah, I like this thing. This is cool. And so she always puts her stuff in there now, which is great. That's awesome. And by the way, so, and you guys there, you, you don't know this yet, but I exchanged this one. He had his uh, own infinity block there, but then I put this one here and this is the fourth generation and it's now yours. So oh, you can, no way. yeah, you can take that home because what you, yes. what you didn't have, you just had one infinity block, but if you get the package, like basically two, you can always upgrade your infinity block endlessly. Like literally in 200 years, your grandchildren could still upgrade the concentration of the field, which is uh, quite fascinating. So, and, and it's also kind of needed because we all develop right or we become more transparent that's kind of like our path here right and at some point you adjust to the energy level that you have at home or we'll call it consciousness level so you know people are familiar with the david hawkins book power versus force and the scale that they have so the basic infinity block has uh, on that specific scale a level of 733. Really? And this is 942. What? So uh, you, you, you know, the, have we ever talked about David Hawkins' work before? No, you we have not talked about it. That's but I, funny because I'm, he's my all time number one teacher for a lot of years. I used to go see him speak. And um, whenever I, you know, promote products or I'm interested in something myself, I haven't mastered the muscle testing. Honestly, I haven't put that much effort into it. It's like, a goal that's always hitting me in the face. Like, Luke, you have to learn this. But I do have a friend who's a kinesiologist master. I mean, he's yeah. been doing it for a long, long time, millions of calibrations. And when someone approaches me with a new product in the energetic, I'll usually send him an email like, dude, test this for me. And I sent him an email about the Leela stuff. I believed it because I believe in Ian Mitchell, who has been on the show a couple of times and introduced us. And I text him, I was like, is this legit? I don't want to mess with it if it's not. And this is way back before I met you. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ian is super smart. And he's also very scientific and yeah. analytical. He's not like a woo-woo kind of guy. So I was like, all right, I, I, Ian vouches for it. But I have sent my friend a number of different things that I rep on my website, the Soma yeah. Vedic and uh, Blue Shield and a bunch of different things. And they all came in over 600, which for those listening, 200 is like your level of integrity, right? So something is false if it's a, just to give them background, although I've done shows about this, but under 200 would be just unintegrous or uh, false, right? And over yeah. 200 would be integrous. But then as you go up the scale, it increases in power. So if something calibrates, you know, at 600 or 900, like that's something you definitely want in your life. But that's that's interesting that you guys 
I came to that conclusion too. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, because you know, some people just use that scale as a reference. You know, we usually look at it really from a um from a different level, but it's sometimes good for people to put things in perspective. And yeah. So that's funny though, because now I'm like sometimes I have so much of the stuff in my house because I always just I'm of the mind like more is better of everything, but it's not always the case. But I have FLFE on my my apartment here, um, and I have it on my business and on my phone and different things like that. But it's always on in the house, and that brings your house to a level five forty. And then there's a, a daily boost you can do that takes it to six hundred for like thirty minutes. But the reason that they don't have it, you can't just have it on nine hundred all the time, is because it would be too much energy and it would be kind of weird for your nervous system to be in that field. I mean, imagine if you lived in, I don't know, a cave in the Himalayas or uh, a beautiful temple or cathedral or something like you wouldn't be that functional because the level of consciousness is too high. So I'm wondering if I have like two or three of these and FLFE and the bio or the, um, the uh, Soma Vedic and all these things, I wonder if I'm like pushing the energy too high in my place. No, the FLFE is actually not needed at all. If you have two of these in your home, because you have a level that's way higher and that signal of the 560 that they provide is, isn't still there, but it has no effect because you're already way up here in that level. So what's down here it's really just a signal so it's it's not not needed in that sense oh interesting um but but then also you know the 942 that's inside here oh, okay and so you're not the out the inside here and immediately you i mean you put your hand in there you'll you'll feel this pretty instantly like within three seconds you'll already feel <laughs> <laughs> that's wild uh so outside that's here that's wild it's, dude it's like tingly yeah I, I thought you'd be ready for the next that's, level and you just jump over a few. <laughs> that's super trippy. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. But so then, you know, your whole house, you know, will, will not be inside here, but through the field of the three blocks, it'll have a quite, quite a field. So we at home, we're roughly at a 900, our whole house. Um, but, you know, with, worked with this for quite some time so it's it's amazing right so big and you feel always like that's the beauty about this upgrading process that you will feel okay i'm ready for the next level like you will know and i would totally agree with the flfe guys you know you you don't want to put someone in a house with with this for a longer period of time who is just not there yet at all like has never heard about energy never done any energy work and all that it'll still be fine because it's super harmonious with the human cells and also certainly with our consciousness but it just may trigger too much it's just the energy level would be too high for a lot of people instantly and that's why you know we have these different levels yeah oh that's interesting <laughs> wow what a what a trip i love this world um so many places i i want to go with this um I want to digress a little bit. So on your site, you have like a, a, a group of healers, right? Yes. Um, I think your wife, is your wife on there? She's one of them. Okay. Yes. And then you mentioned this, this character, uh, Roman Hafner earlier, who's a pioneer in the development of application and quantum energy, who developed the Y pyramids in Europe more than 10 years ago. And I had not heard of the Y pyramids. What's, what was up with that? So you probably didn't hear about it because it was never offered in the US. So he is in Europe, basically based in Europe, I think um, all over Europe, he's known. Like I, I, I think he's been invited to every podcast that you could find in Europe um, because he, he was born with the ability to see everything in frequency and energy fields. So, and but in a way that's like unheard of. Like I don't think there's anybody else in the world that has this granular viewing that he has. He can literally isolate any and all frequencies from other frequencies, move them somewhere. And when he was born, he had to learn the physical seeing, like how I see your dog now or the chair, that's matter that we see, right? That's normal to us. And now we're all trying to learn the other seeing, right? That's, you know, has been our journey. So for him, it was different. He had to learn the quote unquote physical seeing just because he would just, 
see a human and would see the heartbeat. He would see the heat. He would see the frequencies. He could see if something is wrong with intestines. So already as an 11 year old, like he was actually put on stage from like this, I don't know, calling like the energy esoteric guru in Europe at the time, Kurt Tepperwein, which Europeans will know, like he's very famous actually. He always had at least 300 people in his seminars. And then Roman's mother um, took Roman to, to that seminar because she thought, I have to do something with this kid, right? He has all these abilities, but I can't help him really. So they went to court and then, then uh, they said, okay, so what, what can Roman now learn from you? And the guy said to this 11-year-old kid, Roman, I can't teach you anything, but I can learn a lot from you. And then that was the first day of that seminar. That was a whole week. And each day for a whole hour, he put this 11-year-old boy on stage and all the 300 people there could ask questions about their lives, about their illnesses and all that kind of stuff. And he fixed, oh, wow. he fixed the stuff. He gave all the answers and everything. That was kind of where he started and where they realized, you know, it's a real gift that he has that so he can help people. Yeah, so he's a dear friend, actually, and a wonderful person. And he developed this Y pyramid, which basically also concentrated quantum energy. That was over 10 years ago, but it wasn't nearly as advanced as this is now. Um, yeah, but he has helped us with the development and we're working with him with frequencies because before we do scientific testing or release anything for even a test with, with people, we always have him check first. And yeah, which is great, right? Because you, you know you get the right frequencies and you know exactly, okay, this stuff works. Okay, then you can go into the actual real testing, have him view over it and then do scientific testing also. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, what an ace in the hole to have someone like that, especially before you go spend a bunch of money on scientific testing, right? So you're in product development, you have kind of the first, I don't know, um, the first barrier to get through someone like that that's really tapped in and go, okay, cool, this is valid. Now let's move into, you know, into back into the linear to see what's going on, you know, on the scientific level. Exactly. Uh, very cool. So when it comes to uh, calibrating something, like when you had this calibrated using kinesiology and, you know, as a general point of reference, using the Hawkins scale, which of course is just an arbitrary way to quantify consciousness, um, who do you have that's like doing testing? Like, how do you find out the number on something? Oh, okay. Yeah. So obviously, you know, we can ask our healing networks and we have some really special guys and, and girls actually not not just roman there that can all do these tests but this specific test was actually performed uh by ian mitchell so oh wow yeah. cool mm -hmm. oh that's yeah. funny <laughs> our boy that's funny you know that's really interesting because i think i'm pretty sure i turned him on to david hawkins i sent him a bunch of audio that I had of Hawkins and I don't think he had heard it before. And he was texting me like, Oh my God, dude, <laughs> he was flipping out because I think I am, you know, he's, as we, as I was saying earlier, he's very scientific and linear, but he's also in, in this realm as well. And so I think he really resonated with the Hawkins work because Hawkins was very much from both. I mean, he was a clinical, he was a psychiatrist for yeah. 50 years, right? I mean, he was a medical doctor, um, but also a spiritual teacher. So he kind of had, you know, a, a hand in both of those worlds. So it made sense that Ian was like, yes, this is the guy. That's really cool. That's funny. Well, maybe I'm going to start emailing Ian. <laughs> so my other friend is really busy and, you know, I feel bad just sending him stuff all the time, like test this, test this. Uh, but it's, it's useful. I mean, it's a great skill to have in a friend or something to learn yourself, because if that person's good at it and gets reliable results, you can save yourself a lot of wasted time and energy pursuing a spiritual teacher or book or path or modality or spending your money on a technology that doesn't work. Yeah. In fact, there was one EMF thing and I honestly forget the name of it at the moment. I don't want to disparage anyone, but there was one product that someone sent me and I don't know, their website looked good and I thought good enough. It wasn't, it wasn't too expensive. And I sent that to my friend and, he, and it calibrated, I think at, it was over 200, but it was like 205, which is like, I'd probably going to have a negligible effect on someone's health. And then I have, you know, the blue shield EMF thing or the Soma Vedic, they're like 560, 600. So I'm just like, well, if I have something better, why have the subpar product on my site? Um, at, you know, in the interest of not wasting someone's money, but I got to learn how to do the testing. 
I mean, it's just every time I have a conversation like this, I'm just like, dude, I can't rely on someone. But now I'm going to start emailing or texting I am. <laughs> test this, test that. And it really is. It's almost like with the kinesiology testing in the realm of you know non, the non-local phenomenon, right? Not like holding a vitamin on your chest and then you test strong or weak, which a lot of chiropractors do and stuff. But Hawkins discovering that it's a non-local phenomenon, that you can ask any question in consciousness from all time yep. to infinity. And then you know apply uh, that logarithmic scale to it. I mean, it's almost too good to be true. I think it goes over people's head. I mean, I'm just like, why isn't everyone testing everything all the time? <laughs> you watch the news and CNN says yada yada yada. It's like false, <laughs> you know, which you're probably going to get most of the time in that case. But even on the other side of things, in the you know spiritual and new age communities, there's also a lot of falsehood there. And so many people are misled, you know, into teachings that aren't valid or supportive and sometimes even negative, you know? So interesting. I mean, it's the time right now from, from my perspective, you know, that, I mean, it's the time for these types of energies and it's time for humanity to remember, but it's really also to figure out, okay, so what's true in our heart? Because we, in the end of the day, we don't even need like a test like that. If we can just truly find our inner voice again and then know things and and hey you know there's for each topic that's going on right now in the world that's like a topic people talk talk about you have you know all these extreme perspectives right they're completely the opposite of one another and then you have a lot of it a lot of it in between also and and people are overwhelmed with it right because their brains can't figure it out anymore right so you need to really like access the inner voice again your, your your true self and then and then just check you know what's true for me and i think that's a great learning process right now for for us humans so yeah. and we we, yeah. we 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 can't all do that it's just like we just need to do it yeah thank you for saying that it's i think sometimes it's disempowering for us to think we need someone else to tell us if something <laughs> is valid or supportive of our health or well-being right it's like outsourcing everything so that's that's a good point i'm glad you mentioned that uh so back to the research on your site so i was on there this morning and you have these certifications like from a company called the basa institute and then i igef yep what are the means of testing that they use when you want to see like okay this thing we made works like how yep. do they actually conduct these tests and you were mentioning there are some new ones coming out that that haven't been published yet that you've done tell us like all about the testing because i find that to be really fascinating exactly so right now you probably have only 15 to 20 percent of all the studies that we've performed uh, on the website because they've been in translation process and all of that and still being written because a lot of them are in austria and and whatnot right yeah and so the basa institute is in austria it's the largest uh independent um biofeedback and biosystems analysis research and testing institute in europe so they are out of austria so they speak german just by nature and you know then they translated everything but then you know there are certain things that you don't want to published because the words and the grammar are just not ideal so we've had to go through this additional round of you know real translation and the egif institute is actually based out of spain and dublin ireland and so let me just start there maybe so the egif institute is the largest research and testing institute for emf in europe so they, since decades, they've been doing research on EMF and testing devices and, you know, providing perspectives, expert opinions, and they do two different types of tests. So the t-shirt, for example, and our hats and caps and all that, they tested all that for the actual EMF blocking effect, um, and which they all block uh, way over 99.9% .9 of any EMF, whether it's microwaves, 4G, 5G, 3G, et cetera. Um, that's very easy to test, actually. I mean, that's really not rocket science. And do they know. do they kind of uh, make a Faraday cage to eliminate signals and then introduce a signal and try to break through the fabric <laughs> with it, or do you know how they? I actually don't know exactly how they do it, but it's it's not really rocket science because it, to yeah. some extent you can even test that at home, right? You know, just take the T-shirt and measure, you know, with your own. Uh, device that or try to call your cell phone right like that's a way like i have the emf 
cap here for those watching in the video. Um, I haven't tried yeah, it. So, and that, I haven't that, tried it yet, but couldn't you just put your cell phone in here like in full like operational mode and then call it from another phone? And You could, and we actually had some people test it and then randomly send us notes like, hey, this, this, I couldn't call my phone. That's so cool. However, there seem to be differences between, for example, the, the uh, is it the iPhone 12 now, which is appears to be way stronger from an antenna perspective than others. So um, yeah, that shouldn't be the only test. You should really use the frequencies because again, it doesn't eliminate 100%. So uh, we've tested it with iPhone 9, 10, uh, 11, uh, but with 12, I actually wouldn't be too sure that um, you know there's not a signal going through. But again, with your measurement device, you'll see how it all like is even loud right next to your Wi-Fi router. Then you put the T-shirt in between. I put, uploaded a video at some point on our Telegram channel, and then instantly, like it goes all down. Like you can literally see it. I love so, that. Yeah. So, but that's easy to test. So, yeah. what's more difficult to test is something like the capsule that that you have or that that I have here. Um, Twinsies. Or, yeah, or the <laughs> I, I, when I came in here today, I was like, I literally have all his shit. On. <laughs> I'm like, this is ridiculous. I'm like a walking commercial, but I don't know. I was getting dressed, and I was like, oh yeah, actually, I should wear the EMF shirt because I forgot about. It. I wear it when I fly. Yeah, it's amazing, and it's also antimicrobial and uh, bacterial, yeah. right? Yeah. So you don't, you know, you don't get bo in it because it kills the microbes that would make bo. And and an airplane is like the worst place to probably be EMF wise. Yeah, but um, not to interrupt, but I, I want to tell you one thing, a, a good hack with this that I discovered with the cap. Um, it's By the way, it's super comfortable and it's super stretchy, which I like. I've had some of these before and I know they're too tight, so I don't like sleeping in them. But since we're in our temporary apartment and there's a cell phone right down the, or cell tower right down the road, I sleep in this. But then I also discovered that I can pull it down over my eyes and it acts as an eye mask and blacks out the room because I don't awesome. have blackout curtains yet. So this thing is freaking badass. And you're the first one actually telling us that you that you use it as an eye. Yeah, you can, so you can put it on cool. your site. Like if you pull it down low <laughs> enough, it goes to like, and it doesn't cover your nose. And it's yeah. actually more comfortable than most eye masks. Like Blue Blocks makes a really comfortable eye mask, but most of them out there, I don't know, they dig into your face and they're just weird. They're too thick and, you know, yeah. you wake up in the morning and all the circulation is like cut off where the band is on your head and they're just a train wreck. Yeah. So anyway, I, uh, back to the- EGIF. Yeah, EGIF in Dublin and, and Spain. Yes. So what are they up to? So so that is the, the one testing, the blocking effect. And then they measure the heart rate variability if they test, for example, the capsule or you know something like the quantum block. Because in that sense, you, you don't want to block... Uh, EMF because you know if you have this device at home just <laughs> just think about it you, you couldn't take a phone call right if you blocked it all off so this harmonizes and neutralizes EMF and then you can measure that for example uh, with the heart rate variability so you basically they had 12 test persons I think 12 or 14 and then they measure the heart rate variability uh, of these people measure the heart rate variability once Wi-Fi uh, is introduced and you know other EMF and heart rate variability, by the way, is uh, connected directly to the autonomic nervous system, right? So there's a direct correlation there. And then you introduce the device and then see what it does. And in 100% of the cases, the heart rate variability uh, optimized. And uh, it was a quite interesting study because we also found out something that we knew that not everybody is uh, affected equally by EMF. And we actually had one test person that wasn't impacted at all really by EMF. And so she must have been a very healthy person, very tuned into herself because we know that, you know, with your consciousness, you can, you don't have to be affected by EMF, right? None of our healers is affected in any way. They could sleep under a, a Wi-Fi tower. It wouldn't maybe be the nice, v nicest view, but energetically it wouldn't do anything, right? And, and that was the case also with that one woman in the study. She was not affected by EMF. She still had great results with a, um, with a capsule, for example, in that sense. But everybody else had really significant uh, impacts actually off EMF. So... 
you know, and people out there that say EMF uh, has no impact, it's, it's actually false. It really is false. And it, it can be looked at in multiple thousands of studies, right, that have shown it. It's, it's a matter of finding the studies that is difficult, but <laughs> yeah, the th those exist. The suppressed information. Yeah. yeah. And, and so that's what EGIF uh, tested, the, the heart rate variability. And then the BESA Institute, those are actual doctors that came that went through their own transformation from just Western medicine to a completely holistic approach. And they developed um, an advanced Decavol or Vol, you know, Decavol method, which tests your bioenergetic uh, state of your physical body uh, at the acupuncture points. And it's amazing. It's an absolutely, you know, once once you understand how that method works, and it really works, it's 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 fantastic. There's also videos out there that people can uh, look into, uh, just typically about this Decavol method. And theirs is even more advanced, so they can test also EMF. They've done tons of tests. Actually, they had even people in an electric car and then gave them tablet, iPhone, all that kind of stuff, and then tested them and then gave them the quantum block, for example. And yeah, in 100% of the cases, um, our products were able to regul fully regulate out um, the bioenergetic state of the person. And they also had three tests, one before, one with exposure to, you know, let's say, um, certain pesticides and herbicides, for example, or EMF. Um, and then they tested once the product was introduced. And in 100% of the cases, actually, the <laughs> the measurement with our devices was always the best. So they always came in already impacted by something, right? Because most people are just impacted, you know, bad air, bad food, bad EMF, all yeah, that kind of stuff yeah. that we live in. And uh, yeah, so you have to be already living a very conscious life to not be very impacted but so yeah that's what they've tested they've done lots of different studies and with the quantum block for example they've even done studies where they tested you know a whole family including their rabbit you know how they do and how the impact of emf and other stuff is in their home and then they introduced the quantum block and then they tested again and yeah same results it's uh that's you so can cool. measure that stuff oh that's yeah. so cool i love that you guys are doing that i can't wait to get that on the site too maybe by, i bet by the time this airs some of the new studies will be up there too yes yeah which would be cool yeah the the hrv is really meaningful to me i love tests with hrv because you know that's the it's a clear picture of the balance between your sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system right so your your vagus nerve being the um the parasympathetic and whatever the other one is <laughs> i forget at the moment but when your heart is beating with the highest irregularity it sounds like that would be bad but that's actually what you want and so i've noticed when i test my hrv like using the aura ring or something if i've had crappy sleep or i've been traveling my hrv when i sleep will suck if i'm really tapped in my hrv goes up and it's always you know predictable pretty much i kind of know when i'm going to look at the reading on my ring i'm like oh i know last night was a rough, a rough night and sure enough so that one's a really cool thing to be able to quantify uh what about live blood cell analysis this one i always find really neat too where you you know they take a pinprick of blood put in a microscope and if you're compromised by emf pesticides whatever your blood cells are all clumped together looking super ugly and weird and then you expose it to whatever field or intervention and then they're flowing beautifully and all looking how they're supposed to be. You, I think you guys have done some of that too. Absolutely, yes. And uh, we will do even more of that. And, you know, people really resonate with that. And yes, you can measure real physical impact. So that's actually, <clears throat> uh, you know, dark field microscopy is a, is a tool that a lot of uh, doctors in Europe actually still use. Um, it's, and it's, it's very common. You know, most people know about it there and it's just one, one thing they look at. And, yeah, I mean, you you put your hands in in the quantum block, and already after five minutes, the the picture completely changes to the better. Like we've had just amazing pictures, and you know those money rolls—that's what it's called, where the cells are all clogged and they really look like money rolls. That's what yeah. you do not want to have in your blood because that means higher risk um, for stroke, heart attack, you know, any type of heart disease and and other stuff. So you really don't want that. 
And then already after those five minutes, you could see same person, <laughs> the, the blood cells really nicely separated, beautifully aligned. And that's what you want to see. And, and yeah, so we, we were really happy when we saw that. And that was something that we didn't know at first. Okay, so how is the physical impact showing on something like this? And how long does it actually take? You know, do we need to wait for half an hour or an hour? No, it's it's literally, we already did those tests after five minutes. So it was very rapid. That's badass. Now, when you sent me the the latest version, the quantum block here, you sent me some instructional videos that were pretty specific about time frames and things like that. And I'm like, again, the I'm the you know guy that has to try everything to the extreme. So I would just intuitively set, like if I make my coffee in the morning, I put in here, for example, I would just set it in there for 10 minutes or something. But in your video, it's like, no, you just put it in for like a minute or something. Like what, what are some of the protocols specifically with, with the quantum block and the infinity block? Yeah. What are some of the types of things you could put in there? Uh, how long do you put them in there for? What would be the detriment to putting something in there too long? Like often I put something in there, I just forget about it. I go in the other room and I come back. I'm like, oh man, it's been in there a half an hour. And of course I drink it anyway, but tell me a little bit about like the, the protocols that you recommend. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're bringing that up because so just having it sit at home and to help with the energy at home, with the you know, consciousness level, energy level, EMF protection, all that, you don't need to do anything. So that's obviously super, super simple. But then, you know, the beauty about this is you can charge any object with pure quantum energy and actually permanently like this capsule if i put it in i charge that and then this transmits pure quantum energy too so that's what i can do and then obviously with groceries like coffee raspberries strawberries nuts for example uh, all of that you can put in here as well and you basically neutralize the negative or potentially harmful frequencies of that and depending on the strength level there's indeed some recommendations that we have on the website in terms of charging times because you don't want to overdo it. Whereas I must say the the most important rule is in regards to metals. Uh, so when you have a device like this, this works so fast and so instant. I mean, literally, you know, you, ah, okay, you, you feel the field in here with an object, same thing. And so with metal, uh, you want to be a little bit uh, careful that you don't overcharge it just because there's just some implications that not not a lot of the listeners would understand now because they may not have yet a quantum block or infinity block, but you you can basically overcharge the metal. It's not really a bad thing, right? It's still amazing energy. But if I were to then take this ring, for example, here after I overcharged it in here and put it in the other one in the quantum block, then I upgrade the quantum block with it. Now people may think, oh, that's so cool though. You know, I want to do it. No, because the quantum blog is specifically designed so that you can make quantum frequency medicine with it as well. And, and the strength level should stay exactly the same. So you can do two things. You can put pharmaceuticals in there and neutralize the potentially harmful frequencies and regulate it out. Uh, not that many people would take pharmaceuticals, but you know, in some instances, you, you know, you had just had an accident and you need to take a pain medicine, you know, then it comes in very handy. But you know, we may come into times where you don't have access to that or you don't ever want to take pharmaceuticals. You may want to have the frequency though. So what you can do is you can copy the frequency of an XYZ product into, let's say, a card or a capsule or whatever other metal. Metal is good because it holds the energy really well. And then you just take in the frequency. So you actually don't need to take in the physical substance and from the tests that we've done is that it depends really on the substance and everything. So there doesn't seem to be 100% equality, but it goes to 80, 90%. And that's, you know, something that may come in pretty handy. So with the quantum block, that's what you do. You wouldn't use the infinity block for that because this is so strong that it actually adds homeopathic doses to a substance you would put in, and then it, it just may be too quick and too rapid for that. So that's why we rather recommend the quantum block for that. Um, so if one was to be so fortunate as to have both of these, the quantum block and the infinity block, and you had things like um, 
you know, supplements, pharmaceuticals, anything like that that you're going to put in your body, would the inf- uh, the quantum block be more appropriate then for those types of things? Yes. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that's really it. So the the quantum block has a, on on this scale, I think, is uh, at five seventy, no, six forty two, six no six seventy two, something like that, um, on on that uh, David Hawkins scale, but it's exactly set for for that sense and it's already actually great to have that at home also from an energy perspective and it also neutralizes emf and all that kind of stuff but then at some point just for the energy level and if you want to charge object with more quantum energy obviously this is then you know the much greater level right you can do a whole lot more with this that is for this specific use case. Got it. And also for beginners, frankly, you know, somebody that hasn't had a device like this before and hasn't really done so much energy work and is just getting into it, you know, definitely go with a quantum block. It's already powerful. Okay, um, got it. So yeah. I'm kind of overkill then when I'm putting stuff in this one. I could be putting it in that, like a well, drink or food or something like that. No. So, so I mean, the vibration is uh, ever so um, higher. So let's say, you know, let's take an example off of a watch, like a golden watch. You put it in there and then you'll literally feel and see how it vibrates so much nicer, so much finer. But if you, after that, put it in here, you'll see it's so much finer. You just need to watch the time. Don't let it in for too long. It's literally, in this one here, 30 seconds is enough. I mean, for any metal, 30 seconds and you'll have, <laughs> it'll be plenty, right? The, the charge of it. And if you put coffee in, in this one, I mean, also 30 seconds and not more, you know, and 10 seconds would already be enough. It's just sometimes our mind is like, ah, it cannot be done after 10 <laughs> totally, seconds, you know, totally. but it, it really, it can be. Okay, yeah. that's that's <laughs> handy. And then what about this thing here with the ampule, which you sent me a while ago, and it has these little titanium balls in here. For those uh-huh. watching the video, they're little kind of purple colored um, titanium balls. And I just thought it was cool and you know, like I said, Ian said, yeah, this stuff's legit. And then I interviewed you. Um, but I, I don't know if it's psychosomatic, but when I wear this thing around, I, f- I notice it, I feel better. And so, you know, I don't wear it every day, but definitely if I'm going to be in like a high EMF environment in a city or something like that, an airplane, um, I wear it, but I did, I always like to give things to other people to see if they notice it, because I just, you know, if I believe in something, then again, the the placebo effect is high because I believe in it and, and it's doing something. But I turned your stuff on to my friend Khalil. He owns a place called Sun Life Organics. If you're staying downtown, I highly recommend it. It's in Austin. They make incredible superfood smoothies and stuff. But he's kind of always texting me like, what's the latest shit? Like, I want I want the new stuff. What's up? So I sent him this. He got the, uh, the infinity block and he got this necklace. And I saw him about two weeks ago and he kind of is a little less woo-woo than me, but also open-minded. And he's like, Luke, I don't know what the deal is with this stuff, but man, when I have this necklace on, I feel really good. It's just undeniable. I mean, he was totally sold just from trying it out. And he goes, what's up with it? Explain it to me. Like, I have no idea. (laughs) Like, I just know I like wearing it and I feel good too. But he said with both the block and the necklace, he was like, dude, this is incredible. Like, it's such a great thing. And I think he's going to put some of these in his stores too, because he has a chain of these places. Yeah, he reached out actually. Oh, he did? He oh, reached good. out and um, yeah, he said, like, this is amazing and this is so cool and this really works. And no, we're actually, um, I actually have to reach out to him. So I was just so busy, but I think we wanted to work on a larger version, just, you know, not more energy, of course, that's, for that's not needed, but so that he could put like five or six smoothies in there at the same oh, time. Oh, wow. Yeah, so that that's something we'll, we'll do something customized. That's uh, rad. I, think, I didn't yeah. know that he had gotten in touch with you. That's very cool. Yeah, his shops are amazing. He has these giant amethyst crystals everywhere. He's like a crystal collector, but I mean like the biggest ones you've ever seen in your life, you know? So he's really into the energetics of his locations. You yeah. know, they're they're kind of little, almost like a healing cafe. You know, you walk in and there's a really great energy and then all of the ingredients are just pristine. I mean, he's got like a $28 smoothie, you know what I mean? It's like yeah. super high-end stuff. Um, but anyway, back to back to this. What's this thing called and and how does it work? And would there be any benefit to putting it periodically inside of one of the blocks or is it just self-contained, good to go by itself forever? 
Yeah, usually it's uh, self-contained and also the energy doesn't get out of it. So literally like as long as the material lasts, the energy will last as well. So you, there's no need to recharge it. Uh, with the one caveat now, here you have a fourth generation infinity block, which is way stronger. So if you put it in here now, then you'll upgrade this one also. Uh, so yes, you, so you can do that um, just because this is a higher level than it was originally charged with. Oh, okay. Uh, and again, you know, just 30 seconds and you'll be good. And yeah, so the capsule itself, you know, is charged with uh, specific frequencies. So we call it the heel capsule. And so it contains three different uh, main frequencies, some healing frequencies, and then also the frequencies of almost 80 vitamins, minerals, and organic plant extracts. That, oh, wow. Yeah, that are all vital for the human body. So you have that in here. And then these titanium spheres, they're charged only with pure quantum energy. And they help boost the, the frequencies out further. So if you put it in, you could put it inside altogether. But you know, some people that have different types of capsules, because we have a few other capsules too with different frequencies, they shouldn't put the capsule with the spheres together in here to charge it because then you'll have the frequencies also in the spheres. So just put them in separately. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Uh, full disclosure, I already put mine in there. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine because you don't have different ones, so you don't have to worry about it. It's And then it's all upgraded at the same time. Okay, yeah. <laughs> good, 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 good. And then what about um, what about pets and like house plants? You know, I know you guys make a collar. You sent me one for Cookie and I misplaced it somewhere in my apartment because she never wears a collar, so I wasn't used to it. And so now it's, it's in there somewhere. I just don't know where it is. Yeah. But have you guys um, had any... Uh, anecdotal reports from pet owners or people with plants or done any studies in that realm? Because I, I find that when it comes to testing things, I find the plant and animal kingdom really interesting because there's obviously no placebo. Yes. Other than the intention of the person doing the test, which I guess on the quantum level could impact the results, right? Because yes. there's an observer of the phenomenon that could be influencing it. But I love when people do like, you know, they grow some wheatgrass next to a router and it's super crappy. And then they put introduce something like this. And then the wheatgrass is flourishing, like that kind of stuff. The FLFE guys did that actually growing spinach in and out of their field. And it's kind of undeniable. It's really, it's really cool. Have you guys worked with the plant animal world at all yet? Yes, absolutely. And yeah, it's it's amazing what you can see. So we actually have not just some anecdotal reports, but literally like so many reports in regards to plants. People in our telegram group that had done a lot of testing with that. And we actually now have a different problem in our home. We had a plant um, actually in the ro room where we do yoga and meditate and all that. And when we first got that, that plant just didn't didn't feel good there. It was a, a few, few years ago and then basically almost died. And I still have pictures of it. Like it literally had, it it looked terrible. It was almost totally done. And now... Um, it's so big and it's it it almost looks like a whole jungle that that plant on its own and it's getting so big that we don't know what to do with it. <laughs> it's 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 crazy. So now we actually have to really figure out, okay, do we move it to a, another room that is even bigger or do we cut it a little bit? Yeah, because plants resonate with that. Um, when we introduced uh, the the blocks in our home, now we have um, an apricot tree that never gave any apricots ever, not even one this year, first um, first year where it's full of apricots. And yeah, we have a lot of other people that have done also these tests with, you know, how fast uh, do plants grow? They grow faster, they feel good. We have a greenhouse actually now that for testing purposes, where we introduced the infinity block right there. And it's just, we almost can't keep up with the growth. And, you know, we're talking about life force energy, right? Uh, so you're, you're increasing that. And plants need that as well as we do. And they're impacted by EMF and all of that as well and bad soil. So you're introducing a source um, of energy that they need uh, to grow and to be well. And that's basically what it is. But we'll do a more formal study on that um, as well as well as uh, in regards to to animals, so Besa did some animal testing, which was all 100% positive. But we want to do more, and we know that you know 
with their dogs, people have reported uh, some great results. And mainly it's, you know, the quantum energy helps already, but then we have a specific heal for dogs frequency that we created together with Roman actually. Or I must say, you know, he created the frequency and now, you know, we basically converted it into a product where people can leverage it, right? Because, you know, the beauty with a quantum block, to some extent also with this, is you could take this frequency card with this dog frequency and you put it inside um, together with the dog bowl. And then after that, the dog bowl is charged with the quantum energy and this dog healing frequency, right? So oh, wow. you can do that with other things. Uh, as well. And that's kind of a beauty. That's how you leverage these frequencies and you're self-contained, right? You don't need us for that. It's like everybody can do it on their own. Just With, with the dog card, how do you, um, so you can put it under their food bowl, but it's not something you would try to like affix to your dog somehow. Like you wouldn't strap it on your dog somehow and just keep it on there all the time. Would you put it like under their bed or... Yeah. So How do the, you treat the dog? Because they move around and they're not going to wear a bracelet or yeah. like something. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, one uh, one idea really is to take the card and put it underneath, like a blanket or some spot where the dog tends to hang out. You know, for a couple hours a day, and and then yeah, while hanging out there, you know, the dog has the benefit of that frequency. That's one way. And then the other way is really just you know you charge your dog bowl with that frequency. Uh, as an example. Cool. And then, I'm going to do that with Cookie. Because as I was telling you earlier, she's she's not enjoying Texas as much as we are. Uh, she's having a hard time here. I don't know if it's the allergies, the temperature, humidity or whatever, but she's not as happy as she once was. And maybe it's because we're in a small temporary apartment and it's not like, you know, a real house where she can run around. But I want to I want to support the cooks wherever she is. She's probably sulking in the corner at the moment, unfortunately. So I'm definitely going to do that. Uh, let's see. What else did I want to cover here? Have you noticed um, any difference? Like if you're charging food or drinks, have you or anyone noticed any difference aside from just uh, the nutritional impact, but the actual taste of it? I, I don't think I've logged that. Like I put hamburgers in mine, stuff like I was saying, but <laughs> I've never like taken a bite and then put it in and then afterward been like, oh my God, I just haven't ever, I've never thought of it. Has anyone done that or doing that? Yeah. So, uh, so we have this uh, private telegram group and I'll provide you with the link. Because oh, cool. It's, that'd be great. It's private, but obviously it's, you know, the audience, everybody that's interested can join. You just can't find it uh, on, on the search for function and okay. telegram. So we'll and, put it in the show notes. And actually while I'm at it, you guys, uh, the show notes for this episode can be found at lukestory.com slash Leela, L-E-E-L-A, lukestory.com slash Leela. So anything and everything we talked about uh, that you want to look up for links will be there, as well as uh, a 10% discount on the Leela technology. So you'll find that there too in the code. There's Luke 10, but we'll put all that in the show notes. So right. carry on. So yeah, uh, help me again with that question. <laughs> um, was about the taste of foods and stuff. Oh yeah, absolutely. And and that's actually a, a beautiful thing because, in a way, this technology really helps people to get deeper connected with themselves again. And that's really part of our mission, also, right? That's wonderful. If we hear, you know, some somebody just connected with him or herself more, that's when it made my day, right? And so you can do these taste tests. So people have your friends over and then they charge, take some Fiji water and put it in one glass and then they charge the Fiji water in here or some other water and have people do the blind test, right? Or they do it with raspberries and strawberries. And, you know, we have forgotten to feel, to sense and all that. And, and that's a fun thing actually to do. And yeah, people that can see energy, can even see the glass and know exactly how yeah, that one was charged, that one was not, but you can actually also do the taste test. And uh, most people actually can taste the difference in the water or if you put a raspberry in, something like that. Because in a way, what, what this energy does is it invites you as a human into your own completeness and it supports you on that path. And that means physically, but also energetically. So, my analogy is always, at some point I had this picture in my mind and, and that's exactly like how I see it. Um, you know, we're all like riding a bicycle on a dirt road and that's kind of like our life, you know, and, and then we encounter obstacles and a flat tire and stuff like that. 
and we're always moving forward to actually at some point, you know, be way more connected with ourselves. You know, each milestone we connect more in a way. That's that's how the in a past passes. And then at some point, there's this guy that's you know, 50 yards away and saying, hey, you know, why don't you come over here? I got a new Lamborghini sitting here and this is actually on an Autobahn that was just newly built. Huh. So why don't you just hop in and just keep going? So you're having a parallel road and you go in there, you hop in and you're way faster. You can get there way quicker. And yeah, you can still have flat tires on the way. As a matter of fact, you will, right? Because that's life, you know, life has challenges and obstacles. That's, you know, that's part of it. Uh, but yeah, you have a tool that gets you there way quicker. And that's pretty much how it works. And But that's how it works with animals, with plants as well, and but also with a raspberry that you put in because it it sort of energetically optimizes it. And the same thing with crystals. So Khalil, he may have already tried out to put some smaller crystals that fit in there inside. And within a few seconds, and this one actually really probably not more than 20 seconds, you wake up crystals, you know, everybody knows that has had a crystal, you know, some crystals, if you go in a shop, don't resonate at all with you because they're almost like dormant. They're almost like they're not shining. If you put them in here, their full potential comes out and it, you know, it's, and it's pretty visible. That's, that's wow. what that energy does. That's badass. <laughs> wow. Cool. Yeah. I'm sure Khalil has done that by the way. <laughs> he's, he's, we need to buy, build a way bigger one yeah, for his huge crystals. I know. <laughs> totally. Yeah. No, I'm, I, I guarantee you he's, he's done that cause he's been so into it. Uh, man. So what, uh, I guess last thing is what, what's next? Like if you could have any vision for further developments, whether it's products or just R and D stuff, what's, what's on the, on the horizon that we can look forward to that you haven't yet done. Yeah. So we've been asked to do something specifically for kids because people said, you know, this capsule is awesome, for example, but then kids tend to lose it. And it's also for little kids, it's too big. So I think we'll look into that studies, as I mentioned, is, is something we'll put an even bigger focus on. And the third thing is really product testing, because what we know is, you know, we're talking about all these wellness benefits and, and all of that, but, you know, we let it shine through a little bit. You know, if you put products in here, they are optimized. So now we will also look really into certain products, whether it's gas, for example, that gasoline that you put in and you optimize that or oil or a tennis racket. We had just recently um, uh, someone. It's a it's a golf pro. He charged his uh, golf clubs <laughs> with, oh, with really? this. Yeah, and and you know we know these products are optimized, but there's no real testing and studies around that. To what extent? Okay, so and and what if I use gasoline in a motorbike, uh, and when it's charged and I use it, so what's the performance difference like? We want to get into some of these tests because oh, we cool. find that very intriguing too. Yeah, and we, yeah. we just want to know more about it. That's very cool. Uh, speaking of motor bikes and moving around in a vehicle, do any of these have an application in a car to help with the fatigue and EMF and stuff that people like me, the sensitive folks out there, experience uh, driving? Yeah, I mean, you just put this one here on the back seat when you have a longer trip and... Uh, You'll be fine. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. I'm like, I can't believe I haven't tried that. Probably just because I don't want to take it out of the living room or like lose it or break it. But I've done a lot of hacks to my car. It's like I have it's grounded. I have these grounding straps that hang down at the back. I have a Soma Vedic in there, a blue shield in there. Uh this other guy, uh Ibrahim, he's got this thing called biogeometry. And he has these little devices, you know, energetic devices. So I have a bunch of stuff in the car. It might be helping, but I'm still not all the way there. Like if I have a long drive, especially into downtown Austin where there's a lot of cell towers and stuff, it's I get pretty fatigued and it's only like 30 minutes. So road trips, driving out here, which is like a forever trip, three days or something, I was smoked from just being in a car. I think my car has like, it has like the, um, the sensors and the bumpers. Yeah which is nice because you don't have to always like look over your shoulder. You can kind of, it'll tell you if you're about to hit someone. But um, I think the way those work is radar. They're like little radar dishes in the bumper. <laughs> so I think my car is like a giant freaking radar dish. It sucks. Like the more modern your car is, the higher the EMF is. And it's just brutal. But I'm definitely going to try that. 
That's a really good idea. But other than that, really yeah. the capsule, you know, for people that yeah. don't don't have this available, the capsule, yeah. you know, really provides quite some energy. Cool. Yeah, I should just always wear my freaking capsule. I think sometimes <laughs> if I'm going to be doing something active, I'm like afraid my chain's going to break and I'm going to lose it or something. So I'm a, like, I kind of plan out when I wear it and when I don't, but I'll just keep it on all the time. It's also like when people ask me about it, I haven't been able to, and maybe until now I have a little better understanding, but it's so laborious to try to explain it to someone. <laughs> you know, oh, it's an energy thing. People are like, oh, whatever. You know, I'm like, no, no, really. Ask Khalil. He wears this every day. <laughs> um, so cool, man. Good things coming down the pipe. Um, uh, I'm really looking forward to, I think it's Pike actually coming down the pike or pipeline. But I'm looking forward to the new testing stuff. I'm hoping by the time this comes out that those uh, that research will be available on your site because there's a lot on there already. But when you get into the live blood cell analysis and the HRV and things like that, that's super cool. So I'm looking forward to being able to share that with people because it's you know you want to be able to have people um, that aren't in the esoteric realm to be able to understand stuff like this. So thank you for also providing that part of it which makes my job easier because I can just go, go look at the study. <laughs> and it was in Austria, you know, Austrians don't screw around and you're German, you know what I mean? There's, I wouldn't say Austria is like the hotbed of woo-woo-ness in the world. So um, that's very cool that you guys are doing that. Uh, with that, I've asked you this question before because you've been on one time before, but I'm going to ask it again because you might have a different answer. Who have been three teachers or teachings that have influenced your life or your work that you could share with us? Well, uh, two of those are part of our HeLa network. Um, that's Roman Hafner and, and Agni. And the third one, I need to mention her too, because she's impacted me even more. Uh, that's my wife. Nice. Um, obviously, because, you know, I think any wife has a, an impact, right? Quite an impact and vice versa also. But uh, yeah, uh, that was, for me, quite a leap, right? Because... As I said initially, you know, I had totally forgotten what all exists. You know, I think, you know, 30 years ago, I had cut off my emotions and all of that. So you lose access to that whole inner world. And she really helped me to get through that. And yeah, so I think um, those are three teachers Beautiful. and then someone else to read. Ah, you know, did I mention Eckhart Tolle? Um, Last year, I don't read these books yeah. anymore, but at the time, you know, uh, certainly books helped me. And, you know, that was the, the power of now, I think, yeah, was a good huge, book at the time. Huge for me, too. I must have listened to that audio book 500 times, I swear <laughs> to God. I mean, I read, actually, I read the book a lot for years. I mean, just skipping to different chapters and just taking an excerpt. But I listened to that book and many others to just brainwash myself out of my stupidity <laughs> and unconsciousness. Yeah, huge, huge fan of Eckhart. Yeah, it's funny. I saw him a few years ago. Actually, God, it was a lot of years ago on my birthday at UCLA. And he was, you know, he he exuded so much peace that I actually fell asleep. <laughs> I was like in my seat, just like, <sighs> I was so zenned out. But then I was kind of, I was relaxed, but I was kind of bummed because I was like, what'd he say? What'd he say? You know, like, <laughs> you know, he sat there in his little sweater, you know, and his funny little laugh. But uh, yeah, great, amazing, amazing human being, great teacher for people that aren't familiar. I think many people are by now, but yeah, he was a major part of my awakening for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Just uh, creating the framework for the fact that there's a you and that you can observe the phenomenon of your mind and emotions, which is of course inherent to most spiritual teachings, but the way he couched it was so practical and made so much sense and it was so modern and just accessible. Yeah. Great teacher. Yeah. So thank you so much, man. Thanks for bringing your Thank dog you. too. She's around here somewhere. <laughs> Hopefully Cookie gets inspired by her perkiness today. As I said, she's a little under the weather, but uh, yeah, man, thanks for coming out. I appreciate you making the trip. So happy we didn't have to do this on Zoom. We have all the toys to play with and it's just such a great experience always to see you. So thank you. Thanks for inviting me. That's yep. awesome. 